Revelation chapter 3 verse 21 of the King James Version says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. Don't give up yet. Don't let your guard down. Don't let the devil take advantage of you. You cannot allow all the things you have been building to fall now. Jesus prayed for 40 days and 40 nights, but that did not stop the devil from tempting him. If you pray for hours, the devil will still come because of his nature, persistence. When he comes and finds you open, he will attack with full force so that you don't recover. The devil is always planning for every believer. Please don't sleep, don't give up. If the devil is persistent in attacking the children of God, we need to tell him that we are also persistent in resisting the attack by the power of God through Jesus Christ. We must make it clear that we are for God and we are always going to be for God. Romans chapter 8 verse 31 of the King James Version says, What shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? You cannot stop these attacks, but you can repel them. You cannot tell the devil not to attack you, no matter how holy you are. To be honest with you, the more steadfast you are in Christ, the more the attacks. The more you pray, the more you remain faithful, the more the attack from the devil. The more powerful you are spiritually, the more the attacks from the devil. What you need to show the devil is that you are consistent in prayer and you continue to overcome. Don't let your guard down. Even if you have overcome a habitual sinful habit for a week or a month or a year, the devil will try again to make you fall into it. And this time, the fight will be even harder. Demonic persistence is real. Don't let your guard down. As a Christian, the enemies you'll have to face are the flesh and the devil. But today we are not focusing on the flesh. We are focusing on our adversary, the devil. When Jesus came, the devil went after him and tried to make him fall. Imagine the devil, Satan, tempting Jesus so that he doesn't complete his mission on earth, which is to save the world from the hands of Satan. We can see in the scriptures that Jesus was tempted by the devil three times. One time should have been enough, or maybe twice, but he tempted him three times consecutively. This should tell us something about the devil. He doesn't give up. And that is one thing you need to know about the enemy in this Christian journey. The devil does not give up. There is a real demonic persistence. The devil and his demons are extremely persistent. They will come again, and again, and again. There is a real thing called demonic persistence. This is one of the most evident characteristics of the devil and his demons. These spirits are persistent. They have bloodlust vengeance. They are energized by the very power of hell itself. Allow me to show some examples of demonic persistence. Luke chapter 4 verses 1 through 12. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness being tempted for forty days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of Man, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Three times, three times Satan tempted Jesus. 
Satan is a persistent enemy. He will come over and over again. But that's not even the part I want you to focus on. Look at verse 13. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. You see, Satan went away for a season, but he came back again. We see that Jesus had to rebuke Peter and say, Get thee beyond me, Satan. The Bible did not say he tested Jesus just three times in his lifetime. Luke chapter 4 verse 13 says, He left Jesus for a season. That means he left Jesus for some time and he came back to tempt him again. The devil who is causing problems is not giving up. He is not stopping all his attacks and he will not stop anytime soon. Jesus was tempted many times and that was because the devil was persistent. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He was tempted at all points. He was tempted by the devil. The devil will never leave you alone. As long as you are still breathing and you are in this world, the devil will never let you be. You need to guard yourself. You need to know what you are doing. Sometimes you see some people who are addicted to sex, drugs, masturbation, porn, and some other sinful things, and they stop doing that thing for a while and then come back to it later. The reason is that the devil will leave you for a season and then come back with more power. He will come back with full force to make you fall back into that sin you have been running from. This is why it is so important not to let your guard down. Every believer has different struggles. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Listen to the choice of words. The sin which so easily ensnares us. Everyone has a sin that so easily ensnares them. For some, it's pride. For some, masturbation. For some, it is fornication. For some, it's anger. Others, it's lust. For some, it's sins of the flesh. Others, it's sins of the spirit. What the enemy does is come with that sin or tries to put you in situations where he can tempt you with that specific sin. A man who was a former alcoholic was giving his testimony about demonic persistence. He had not had a drink of alcohol for over 12 years, but he detailed how much he had to struggle with the temptation of alcohol. He stated, never ever would anyone offer to buy him food or gifts or anything, but everyone he would come across with in life, they would offer to buy him a drink of alcohol. When people at his workplace who didn't know about his struggle bought him a gift for Christmas, they would buy him alcohol. Never would anyone ever offer to buy him anything except alcohol. There is a real demonic persistence about the devil. If you struggle with fornication and adultery, believe me, time and time again, the devil will present people of the opposite sex in your life to tempt you. Satan never tempts you with something you don't struggle with, or something that doesn't appeal to you. He tempted Jesus three times and left him for a season, only to come back another time. Jesus was talking about the operations of the demons in the Bible. He said, if one demon is expelled from a body and it doesn't know where to go, it will go back with deadlier demons. Matthew chapter 12 verses 43 through 45 says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The fact that you have prayed against a problem and it has gone, doesn't mean you should stop praying. It doesn't mean you should not fight continuously. The Bible says that prayer must be something you do all the time. It must be something you never stop doing. You cannot stop praying because the devil will never stop trying to tempt you. Another thing I want us to know about Satan is that he doesn't sit at a place. Forget the fact that he might have a throne. Forget about him saying he wants to set up a throne. He doesn't stay at a place, and the Bible made it clear. 
Job chapter 1 verse 7 of the King James Version says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Satan said that he is going to and fro in the earth. What do you think he's doing? Do you think Satan has the time to sit on a throne and be commanding? He is going to and fro the earth, looking for those that he will destroy. He will not give up. He will not stop until he gets what he wants. The question now is, will you give up? When you think you have overcome a temptation, will you give up? The Bible says if you think you are standing, you need to be careful because you might fall. The devil will leave you and then go to reinforce the attack. If he comes back and he finds you sleeping, he will cause a lot of damage to your life. In Job chapter 2 verse 2, Satan still told God the same thing. You would think he'd probably have gone to sit on his throne, but he did not. He was persistent. He was working all day and all night. This man doesn't sleep. He is always working to make people's lives miserable. Job chapter 2 verse 2 of the King James Version says, And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Satan, who wants you to fall, is like this, and you are sleeping. Isn't that dangerous for you? Many of us will call ourselves Christians, but we are sleeping spiritually. This isn't right. You need to wake up. Revelation chapter 3 verse 2 of the King James Version says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. You need to be in Christ, because that is the only way to overcome him consistently. Jesus overcame him. All the plans, all the tactics, all the forms he used, Jesus overcame them all. You need to be close to him so that you can overcome it too.